if what you want is ultimate freedom at some point in your business, um, and I feel that we've kind of gotten there at this point, but uh, I don't have to be there day to day is that premise of hiring the right person in every position. And it doesn't matter how, uh, you know, it could be a top executive. You're still using the same hiring process to make sure that that even the top executive isn't going to throw your culture off. Um, number one, but number, you know, there's a multi-phased approach to it. Yes. They can have a nice resume, but I had, I had someone tell me that anyone can be a good actor in an interview. And so you can't just hire off of someone's resume and a good interview. There's a lot more to it to make sure they're, they're going to be an A player in your organization. But ultimate freedom comes when you can get away. I, I've been able to get away from the day-to-day -day in my business. And that was the pivotal thing that I changed was around hiring in order to be able to do that. Well, we had lots of conversations about that <laughs> process. Yes. Right? Um, and, and I, I, I want to say one thing, someone might be listening and say, well, I'm not an entrepreneur. This doesn't apply to me. But, uh, if you're working in a fortune 500 company and you're a manager, you're a leader, you still need to hire for traits, not skills. Otherwise you're going to be shackled down. You're going to be spending your whole time trying to get someone to be something they're not. And the principle still applies to you. Right. I think too, that managers who, um, um, want to, you know, continue to grow in their career, um, how need to learn how to hire the right people, because the expectation is for me, if, um, this person wants to take on more responsibility, they have to be able to offload. And this is something you taught me offload things off their plate in order to take on new things or to not fill their plate up with something else. You know, sometimes it's just getting things off their plate. But um, uh, if they don't have someone they can delegate those things to, they haven't hired well, in my opinion. Right. And also part of the process of freeing you from the business wasn't just about the hires that you were making, but the hires that the people that you lead were making. Exactly. We have to, I call it the grand, grandparent principle. It's not about the people that you lead. It's not about your children. It's about your children's children. It's about right. how your leaders are creating more leaders themselves. Exactly. And that's a big part of the reason why you have so much freedom. So I, always, I have the, the distance to empty principle, Marlene, which is the question of how many hours, how many days can you be away from your business and it still runs? For me, it's, I, you know, I can take two months off a year. What's your distance to empty right now? How many days can you feel like you, I mean, obviously there might be a quick check-in, but how many days can you step, substantially step away from your business and it still runs without you? Um, well, I've tested this recently or well, in the last okay, few good. years, um, really about 18 days. I could probably okay. extend it, I'd say a month. Um, but the actual test that I've done is about 18 days. And that's when I did my cross state horseback ride. And you use such a great word there, which is test, right? Yeah. So you're, you're testing it and trying it out. And I think that's something that, uh, someone listening to this can test as well, right? Just go away for a little bit, see how long you can go. And then you go, oh, okay, that was too long. And that gives you that distance to empty number. So. Yeah, I remember being on being on vacation. Um, I, I have not forgotten that. I remember when uh, we chatted about me being on vacation and, and while I'm on vacation, planning my next vacation. <laughs> I tell that story, by the way, in, in my book. It's in my book, The Power of Having Fun. And when I teach, I talk about the person who was sitting planning the next vacation. And now yeah. they know it's you. It was you yeah. who was doing that. Um, I, and you said, holy <laughs> crap, I have a disease, right? Yes. <laughs> I, I love that phrase. I, I think the crazy uh, years um, uh, where I wasn't able to step away from my business uh, on vacation, I got into this habit of always uh, being present to the company, taking calls, checking emails, et cetera. And I still do that because my inbox gets so 
crazy, but I only set a certain, you know, a small amount of time aside in the morning with my cup of coffee to clear out my inbox or to address something that might need, but I'm not solving crises. It used to be a joke right. that when I would go on vacation, uh, someone would quit, you know, there'd be like one of the managers or what have you would quit while I was gone. And so then it was crisis mode. And I just, I think became accustomed to the fact that vacations were not, it was just being away, but I was still doing the work, if if that makes sense. And so, yes, yeah, so yeah. being able to test it and say, I can be gone. Um, I remember being, going um, early on when Matt joined, we had a, a anniversary trip to Italy planned. And I remember going to internet cafes. It was right at the start of when you could um, use your cell phone. Uh, to check emails and international travel was not a big deal. But back then we would in Venice, we're looking for, I kid you not, an internet cafe to check email while we're in Venice. <laughs> and uh, so I, I strongly encourage people to start testing being away and not having to, you know, the work follow you while you're, you're on your oasis. If you liked this video and want to listen to the full episode Go to your favorite podcast app and subscribe to the Dave Crenshaw Success Project. You can also find all the full episodes at successproject.show.